Hey guys, so I wanted to start a new series of FAQ style videos on here. The main reason being is because to keep up with the YouTube algorithm and keep posting weekly, uh, the type of content that I've been doing previously that I've kind of stockpiled a bunch of it um, is really hard to produce on a weekly basis for myself. So um, doing FAQ style stuff is really easy and quick for me to film. So that's part of the reason why I'm doing it. But also you just get to ask me any questions. So I just put it to my Patreon community, um, ask them what I should name this series, just basic FAQ style series of videos. And uh, we have a winner instantly, I've just seen it, Hoppo came up with AJFA, which is an acronym for and justice for all which is like my favorite record, which is always what I think of when I see that. But in this instance, it's gonna mean ask Josh f anything. So basically the other night I asked my Instagram community for a bunch of questions. And from here on out, if you have any questions for these videos, uh, ask them in the comments below. And even if I don't reply to your comment in the next one, if it's, I think, a good question, then I'll probably get back to it in another one. So just feel free. I'll probably see all the comments. I'll make a note of all the good questions. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. So, first question, Lucas French Fry asks, favorite guitar you owned but don't anymore? And then vocal progression from the first album as a lead singer to now. Uh, favorite guitars I own that I don't anymore? The first two that I actually do own now, I'll just mention that I sold my uh, LTD Michael Wilton 600, which I recorded all the rhythm guitars for Conclusion and Edge of the Earth on. I sold that to Faisal, who is the bass player in Loathe, and I asked him in 2019 if I could buy it back, and I did. And same goes for the M2 I used to record most of the solos on um, Conclusion, and I had it for Supreme Oppressor, I guess, as well. Uh, I sold that to a guy called Shane, and same year I messaged him, do you still have the guitar? And I managed to buy it back. Other than that, I used to have um, a BC Rich Warlock with a reverse headstock, it was black. That I took to all my guitar lessons as a kid and it had a super thin neck, really comfy, didn't neck dive. Uh, it was a piece of crap, really cheap model and it was beat up. But um, I wish I still had that. And I also had like a one later on that was Diamond Inlays, BC Rich Warlock and a Platinum Pro Ironbird that was all black with Diamond Inlays. Um, and for some reason, BC Rich guitars have gone super expensive now. But... Um, yeah, I, I always liked Max Cavalera playing the Warlock back in the live in Barcelona video I used to watch a bunch as a kid. Uh, vocal progression from the first record I was on until now. Um, I've definitely changed my technique a bit um, on the last two records. I was finding I was kind of clenching up too much uh, before that, and I wasn't able to project as loudly as I wanted to, and now uh, I can. I've just put a lot of work and time into my vocals, so um, I'm glad that people can here that it shows. Up next, um, this question is from Sam Scar. What do you play other than guitar? I saw you once playing drums. Are there any others? Um, yeah, I used to play drums quite a bit. I used to be quite good. I used to be, have quite fast feet um, and I was okay at drums. I played in a metal band for a little while called Outcry Fire who were from Maidenhead. Um, I was okay. I definitely suck now. I do a lot of kind of table drumming on my desk and anytime I put a pair of sticks in my hands, the difference that I'm so used to hitting a table with my fingers to having that extra long, by comparison, stick in my hand just uh, just feels completely different and I can barely play. I do dabble with piano. I never had lessons, but my parents always had one at home and I just sit in front of the piano and just kind of come up with stuff. I think it's a really good thing to do if you're in a rut with what you're writing, especially if it's melodic stuff. As a guitarist, you kind of look down at the fretboard, you see the same frets and you kind of do the same chord progressions. Whereas writing in front of a piano, even though I do know all the notes, I kind of just let my hands kind of move around and I don't really think too much about it. And I kind of come up with different melodic ideas that I might not um, on a guitar and then I then transpose that onto a guitar. So that's quite a useful thing to play around with if you have the option. Songs from idea to release, interested in your approach. Um, yeah, I mean, it can vary completely. So sometimes I'll write a song within an hour or two hours and like I'll have all the parts and it just comes out super quick. That is really, really rare that that happens, but it does happen. Um, other times I'll have a song that I've been working on for like a year or two years that I just can't finish. It's either too long and I don't know I'm attached to all the parts and I just can't fathom removing any of those parts that are making the song too long or 
maybe I've just got a song that is nearly finished, but it needs something added, and I just can't figure out what the song needs to finish it. So it's a whole variety of different things. At any given moment, I've probably got between 20 to 40 different Silosa songs in a folder um, that I'm working on, and it's kind of, I always describe it as like spinning plates. Every now and then, I'll just go through the folders, listen to the song, listen to the riffs. If I haven't heard it in a while, it might inspire me to write something to add to it, or I might have an idea for another song that's just popped into my head, and then I realize I can combine the two. Uh, so I just keep cycling through the folders just every day, just open up. Not every day, but every day that I'm writing, I'll just like cycle through. And if I'm not inspired, then I just won't try and write anything. What kind of sports do you do, and do you also train on tour? I don't really do any sports. I used to skateboard a lot. That was my main thing. That was I was into that before playing guitar, and uh, yeah, that was like I was obsessed with skating. Um, other than that, I like going to the gym, working out. I try and do it when I'm on tour. I have a really cool uh, like multi-resistance band kit that I bring that has door attachments, and I'll bring a pull-up bar. But on the most recent tour that we just did with Malevolence in, in winter here in the UK and Europe, um, everyone just kept getting sick on the bus, and you keep breathing in the same air, and then one person gets ill, and then eventually it all just keeps circulating. So... Uh, I didn't really work out on the roads just because I wanted to kind of um, just, you know, I, I kept getting sick. And like my main concern, especially as a vocalist, is like, oh, am I going to have a sore throat? Is my voice going to be okay? Luckily, my voice held up. That wasn't an issue. But I, if it's a tour like that where people are just constantly getting run down, uh, I don't want to stress myself out too much physically and recover from workouts when... I just want to recover from the previous show and that kind of thing. Vika Shanoi Music, I hope I pronounced that right, asks, uh, which guitar did you use for tracking rhythm on the latest album? Um, I used two different JM2s, one for the left and one for the right. Uh, they're exactly the same guitar, but every guitar sounds slightly different. Um, and it's kind of cool to when you're using the same guitar tone on the left and the right, which I usually prefer to do. Um, slight changes in the guitar can help just with the stereo widening kind of stuff. Same person again, when did you give up alcohol in 2013? No real reason. I kind of um, enjoy being quite disciplined in various aspects of my life. Uh, hangovers were just getting worse. I didn't like waking up and having a wasted day where I just felt like crap and couldn't do anything. I'd rather just be able to write a song or go on a walk or just not waste my time and I just like being focused and getting stuff done so uh, I never look back uh, same person again what non-metal artist have you been listening to lately uh, in all honesty I'm one of those people that rarely listens to music that isn't metal um, yeah I, I like a handful of bands that aren't in the metal genre like Nine Inch Nails even though they're super closely linked I mean you know some of their stuff is industrial metal but some of it is not um, a perfect circle who are very closely linked to the metal world as well um, Radiohead uh, there's there's a bunch of stuff but it's so rare that I listen to music that isn't metal um, but I do like some dark electronic music or uh, even like dark kind of poppy stuff like um, Greg from Dillinger's other band The Black Queen really like that uh, the two records they did um, but yeah, it's so rare that I listen to music that isn't metal. Like for the most part, I'm listening to Cannibal Corpse, Sepultura, Testament, Chimera, Pantera, whatever. Just stuff like that. Favorite song on Ride the Lightning, Fight Fire with Fire. Timmy Picks asks, songs you learned to help your playing when you were younger, e.g. stamina or technique. The most uh, monumental one for me was learning um, the galloping riff, the battery by Metallica, the main riff. Um just once I kind of, kind of get my wrist to kind of do those movements, it opened up a whole um, door to guitar playing that I, I was always really focused on writing good riffs and rhythm playing. And I was obviously at the time listening to a lot of like Fear Factory. And if you can't play Battery by Metallica, you probably can't then play some of those, you know, intricate picking Fear Factory riffs. So, um, yeah, learning Battery by Metallica is a must for anyone playing metal. Top five metal lead guitar players of all time. This is a tricky one. Um, for the most part, I never really liked guitar players that were like solo artists. I never really listened to like Joe Satriani or anything like that. Um, I always liked guitarists that just did kind of their thing within a band context. So for me growing up, it was always Dimebag was my favorite lead player. Um, looking back, 
Um, whenever I revisit like Domination by Morbid Angel or King of All Kings by Hate Eternal, I realize how much um, Eric Rutan's kind of phrasing is rubbed off on my playing. So he's probably up there. Uh, Vogue from Decapitated, especially all the solos on Nihility, like the technicality and, and the phrasing and his feel as well, uh, was really great, really inspiring to me. So specifically the Nihility record, um, Vogue from Decapitated, amazing. Um, one of my favorite Metallica solos is actually a James Hetfield solo. I didn't realize at the time, but the one in To Live Is To Die, the really melodic, didn't realize that was him. And as a kid, I was like, that solo was really like just felt so powerful to me and I, I didn't realize until later there was a Hetfield one so I'm going to put James in there and then I'm going to have to look at my phone for just my Spotify and just like see if anything stands out I'll just go from the top I'll just have a quick scroll I'm going to just fifth place is just going to be honorable mention so I'm going to put in um Chris from March Enemy on uh particularly on Anthems of Rebellion and uh what's the other one what's the one they did before that he's a great player both the guys in soil work particularly around predator's portrait and natural born chaos so that was peter witches and ola i can't remember his surname but um those guys were hugely inspirational to me for like the more melodic phrasing and stuff um pat from cannibal corpse huge cannibal corpse fan uh, fan and jack o'brien um the kind of pat and Jack, era of Cannibal Corpse, like Bloodthirst is, yeah, big for me. Loved those records, loved all the solos. Trey from Morbid Angel, Chuck from Death, um, Michael from Symphony X, obviously sick. Uh, Brent from Mastodon, really tasteful player, especially with some of the solos on um, Crack the Sky, uh, particularly in The Last Baron. Like, really kind of soulful, great playing. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it with those. X Daniel X 2244 asks, do your ESP customs come with stainless steel frets? Uh, I don't know if he means my actual custom shops, like the spiky one behind me that I just got recently, or if he just means my signature model. Um, but the signature model definitely comes with stainless steel frets. I'm frets. I'm pretty sure that the custom shops have stainless steel frets as well, just because I hate stuff wearing out on me. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure they all do. Alex Lincoln asks, harsh realities of touring that the average person may not know. Uh, the main one is just, like, bad sleep, and that sucks, and, like, sleep's really important. Um, no matter how comfy the tour bus is, um if the roads are bad or the driver's bad or other people on the roads are driving badly, you're probably going to wake up a few times in the night because of like swerving or something. And particularly for myself, um, I have a bit of, uh, I wouldn't call it PTSD, but Solosis was in a really bad bus crash in 2013. We were on tour with Trivium and Devil Driver uh, in the US and Canada. We were in Canada at the time and our RV crashed and it was a very bad accident in terms of the damage done but we escaped with very minimal um injuries but uh yeah any kind of like heavy braking or anything just like as soon as i'm like that kind of thing happens my arms go out of my bunk and i'm trying to like stable stabilize myself uh, and i probably wake up more than most people so i've gone a bit off topic but the travel sucks obviously um there's so many negative things that um i've been touring for so long that i'm kind of just used to them but if you've gone for like years and like, you know, you don't start touring till you're like late twenties, early thirties, it might be a bit of a weird adjustment. Whereas I've been doing it since I was a teenager. So I'm just kind of, it's all kind of just normal to me. But yeah, the, the sleep can suck the, the long drives, hotels, um, that suck airports flying to Australia is long. It's like 24 hours of travel. That one is brutal. Uh, yeah. But on the whole, the shows make it worthwhile. So I'm going to cap it there for today. I'm probably going to keep filming because I've got so many questions. And then you're going to see like a part two of this at some point in the future. But like I said, uh, just leave your comments or questions for these videos in the comments section. All the good questions, I'll make note of them. So don't worry if I'm filming a bunch today and you're not going to see another one until much later on down the line. 
if it's a good question, I'll make a note of it and I'll hopefully get back to it. And also I just want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon community. Uh, the support really goes a long way in supporting me personally, so I really appreciate that. Uh, if you're not already a member, please consider joining up. There's various different tiers. Um, in the highest tier, anytime I do like a, a gear demo or a mixing tutorial or anything where there's music involved in the channel, um, I will put up all the stems, the guitar DI tracks, drum MIDI, bass, all that kind of stuff for you guys to download and you can practice mixing it or just mess around with uh, my recordings.